the topic of creation. All, of course, everybody who's a Christian believes that God's the creator, right? That's easy. We all agree on that one. But we have some disagreements. And one particular disagreement that Christians have I want to focus on today. The question is, how long ago did God create? And you might say, what does it matter? Who cares if it was, you know, this many years ago or that many years ago? Well, I'm going to show you today what implications it has for our salvation, what implications it has for sin, and what implications it has for the new earth. How long ago did God create, and why does it matter? I just want to show you a picture. Can anybody tell me what this is a picture of? Okay, and does anybody happen to remember uh, what it might mean? Okay, you see the, the, the book at the bottom, which book's that one? The Word of God. The Word of God, the Bible. Okay, that's very important to us. It's the Holy Spirit. It's a bit hard to see the cross, see the cross between the pages of the Bible. And then there's a, a fire that's coming up out of the word. There's three stripes in the fire. That's this very uh, important. The three angels' last messages in Revelation 14, or some people also think about the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the, the three in the Trinity. You notice that it's coming up in a circle. It's surrounding something. Inside that gap in the middle, this picture shows it better, not too, bad, not too good to see, is the earth. These, these, these uh, flames are encircling the earth with the, uh, the special message for the last days. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is essential, the, the Word of God, the Bible is essential, the cross is the, uh, is the point where this all comes from, and it's all focused on this planet Earth for us. So for me as a Seventh-day Adventist, I have some specific beliefs that are quite different to many, to probably the majority of other churches. And this one today about creation, the Adventist view on creation is very different to almost any other Christian or non-Christian in Port Augusta. You get anybody on the street and ask them what they believe about creation, and I think you'll be shocked that we have a minority view. Okay, so let's just see what the story is. What's, this, what's the problem that we have regarding the idea of creation? Well, more and more Christians are saying it is not true this is, that they are saying it took God more than seven days to create the earth. God did not create the earth in seven literal days. There's all kinds of other explanations they use. And these are Christians talking, people that believe in God, they believe in the Bible. But they'll say, no, it wasn't seven literal days, it was seven long periods of time, maybe a thousand years. So on the first day, it took a thousand years and God did the first thing, you know, then there'd be light. On the second day, God separated the water from above from the water beneath, and that took another thousand years or two thousand years. This is a very common Christian view. This is, this is not, I mean, a hundred years ago it was rare, but today it's very common. And these people are scientists, they're very smart people, they have good academic reasons from the Bible, they think, to prove their point of view. So we're going to just discuss this one a bit more. Okay, more Christians are saying that the Bible is compatible with popular geological chronology and biological evolutionary process. What does that mean? What they're saying is, you know in the high school textbooks about evolution, they say, oh, that evolution stuff in the textbook, that fits what the Bible teaches us. And the Bible supports what they teach in the textbook. And we can, we can use science to prove the Bible. We can now get along with our atheist friends because both atheists and creationists, we all believe in evolution, except that for a Christian, we believe that God helps the evolution to take place. So it's like what we call theistic evolution. God helped us evolve over millions and millions of years uh, to what we are today. This is, this is a common Christian view that many people have. We are, as Seventh-day Adventists, we are a minority <coughs> view that say, God created the world in seven literal days. That is not as common as it used to be. Okay. These people are highly educated. These are smart people. And they have good, at least they have good sounding reasons to tell us uh, what they think. Remember the Bible says, in the last days, 
um, all kinds of false teachings will arise and it will deceive even the most intelligent people, even the elect, even the people of God will be confused by these false doctrines. I want to focus today on what I believe is a false doctrine, the false doctrine of the uh, extended age of the earth or the extended evolutionary creation processes. Okay, so on the one hand, Seventh-day Adventist, we say God created the world in seven little days, day one, sunrise, sunset, well, there's no sun yet, but we have God said that he lights, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, God creates man, day seven, the Sabbath. That's the literal view. Other views say, no, it wasn't just one day, it was thousands of days or thousands of months or thousands of years between each of these, these, um, these days of creation week. And there are other, other theories too, all kinds of different ideas out there. Okay, I just want to show you just quickly... Um, these three men here, these are some of the, the most intelligent academics in Christianity today. These are men of God, these are sincere Christians, and these are our best friends when it comes to having discussions with the atheists, because these people have very strong arguments on why we should be Christians, very good reasons why the Bible is true. They all believe the Bible is authoritative, and they also all believe that creation took more than seven little days. So, how is this possible? These, these are sincere people, these are not, not non-believers, these are genuine Christians, but they believe this, this stuff is different. Okay. So, this is what they say. This is, this is not my words, this is what these three people are saying. Now, the colour coding today, if it's green, green means, as a Seventh-day Adventist, I support that one. If it's yellow, that means I'm a bit nervous. And if it's pink or red, I'm not happy with it, okay? So, if it's green, I'm supporting this one as a Seventh-day Adventist. They say to us, God's revelation to us in Scripture is reliable and trustworthy. Do we believe that one? Yes. We do. We believe the Bible is a sole authority. It's a, it's a solid authority. It's a trustworthy authority. They also say, this is yellow now, so be careful, God's revelation to us in nature and the scientific world is trustworthy. Can we trust science? Well, I think we can sometimes. We've got to be careful. To a certain extent. Okay. We've got to be careful with this one. In, in the Bible, it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Okay? So, what these three people say is, well, if the heavens declare the glory of God, how can the heavens lie to us? The heavens can't lie. If the heavens tell us the earth is x million years old, therefore it must be x million years old, and the Bible must just need to fit into that somehow, because God is telling us through science what the truth is. We've got to be careful with this one. Science is good, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in science. I love science, but we've got to be careful. Anytime anybody has an idea, it's always interpreted in a certain way. And we've got to be careful as scientists that we interpret in the right way. Okay? So we agree, but we're a bit nervous about this one. They also say, Genesis chapter 1 makes it clear that God created the world in six consecutive. Okay, we agree on that one. The one guy in the middle, he has a different perspective, but that's alright, we'll, we'll, we'll skip him. Um, six sequential, but they say extended periods of time. That's what we disagree with on that one, okay? Uh, that's, that's, that's pink, if I put it on red, it'd be too hard to see. So pink means I don't, I don't agree with that as an, as an Adventist. Okay. They say God's Sabbath continues today, 24-7, until the final day of judgment. Because no, day one was a few thousand years God made life. Day two, God separated the atmosphere. Day three was the dry land. Day four was the sun, the moon, the stars. Day five was the uh, vegetation, the plants, the birds, the fish. Day six, of course, the mammals and humans. And of course, day seven. We're in day seven right now, they say. I disagree with that. But that's what they say. We're still, yeah, yeah, that's right. They say, they say, that the next few thousand years, right now, we are having a Sabbath. God is not creating. God is having a Sabbath. He's not working anymore. I disagree with that, but that's what they say. All right, is that making sense? Am I, am I making it clear? Okay. So we disagree. We think, as a Seventh Day Adventist, I say every week we have six literal days. We have a seventh day. And then we have six more literal days, 
and then another seventh day, and another six more days. Uh, that's that's how I see the Bible. They, they proved they proved that theory by giving uh, when they had the ten day work cycle. Yes, Trevor's saying we've tried different lengths of weeks, and it doesn't yeah. seem to work if we go away from seven too well. Or, okay. So just quickly, and I think everybody probably already knows this one, but in the classrooms, if you go to high school today, I'm not quite sure um, what you've seen in your high school textbooks, but when I went to high school, and this one here comes from somebody who was a former Christian. He, he um, and this is fairly common, most people believe the, the universe is 13.7 billion years old. Um, they say um, life began hundreds of thousands of years ago and then humans came on the scene um, you know a few tens of thousands maybe a hundred thousand years ago in the creation perspective that i have as a young earth creationist i say that god created human life on earth much more recently than that about between five to ten thousand years ago some people say six is a pretty common number so this is, this is what, I'm going back now to the evolutionary perspective, if you look at the circle, the top of the circle, at the 12 o'clock position, that's where they believe the earth was formed. So 13.7 billion years ago, the Big Bang, all this dust floating around in the sky. And, and then they think about four and a half million years ago, that's when the earth was formed. And as the earth cooled, and as the um, atmospheric properties changed, then then some things began to happen that life forms, these, these um, little circle um, like boundaries, that's the different life forms coming into existence. So three and a half million years ago, photosynthesis began to happen and so on and so forth, I won't get any detail. But what this really means is they say many, many, many millions of years ago, there were some simple life forms and then some more advanced life forms and then the more complicated life forms. The evolutionists are saying this, and also the Christians Sorry, are saying this. Go. All right, have a wonderful afternoon. Okay. Now, here's a question. We're not going to focus on science today. We're not going to focus on trying to prove who's right or wrong today. We're simply going to ask a question. The question is, here's the question. If the Earth is really old, what does that mean for our theology? In other words, if the Earth is really old... How does that change our understanding of God? How does it change our understanding of sin? How does it change our understanding of lots of things in the Bible? That's a question we're going to try and answer just briefly in the next few minutes this morning. Okay, if we believe the earth is really old, this is what we have to believe. If we believe the earth is really old, we have to believe that death was normal for animals before human sin. Does that make sense? I'll say it again. If, if my Christian brothers who say the earth is really old, if they are true, they must also say that death happened before sin. That's, that's what they have to agree. And they do. They say this. They say, yeah, yeah, there was death before Adam. When Adam sinned, only humans began to die. But before that, animals died for millions of years before Adam and Eve sinned. Do you see a problem with that? What's the problem if sin, if, if death happens before sin? See, you read in the Bible that, uh, I just can't think of it, but he had a name for the dinosaur in the Bible. I can't think of it. Oh, and Adam named all the animals? Amapheus, according to the Bible, is a dinosaur. A great big giant animal is in the Bible. They have to get, I can't think of it. A Leviathan? Yeah, yeah, it's in the Bible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was the fellow that uh, got all his kids taken away and all that, you know? Oh, right, Joe, yes. Joe, yeah, he's in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. And yeah. he saw this big, giant, giant animal. That animal doesn't exist today. It, it could be, yes. He yeah, called this, an this, There's a bit of uncertainty about that one. Yeah, yes. it's in the Bible, you know? It is, we, yep. Yeah. Okay, now the second problem, in addition to, in addition to death happening before sin, We've also got a problem now with natural selection. Now, natural selection means in the evolutionary theory, and they don't believe in God, so they say, here's how it happened. There were some simple life forms, like some amoeba or some, or some you know, simple single-celled organisms. They grew stronger, they had a fight. The stronger ones won, the weaker ones died off. And then 
it, life became more complicated through what we call natural selection. If we Christians want to say the earth is really old, this is also a problem that we have to f figure out. Not only is death normal before sin, but also pain and suffering is part of God's plan to help life improve. Do you see that problem? If, if my Christian friends say the earth is really old, like millions of years old, and there's been, there's been animals for millions or thousands of years, they're also telling me that God must create pain and suffering to help life to improve. God didn't make it good enough the first time. He had to make simple life forms that then evolved slowly, where the, where the strong ones beat up the weak ones, and then we have the more advanced life forms today. That's crazy, because, you know, we got a name uh, for the dinosaur, Yamati, Yamati in Australia, okay. and the humans being walked with them. There, so it's yes, not that, that old. There are, there are fossilized footprints with animals that are supposedly extinct long before humans existed. The, the, the footprints are together in the same it's time. It's funny, isn't uh, it? I believe God created everything at the same time. Yeah, well, but, uh, you raised a good point there. I don't want to focus on the science this morning. I'm not going to try to use science to prove or disprove anything. I'm simply going to say, if we allow our Christian brothers to talk about an old earth, these are the theological problems we've got to start thinking about. So, already we've got two problems. Number one, if we say God created the earth and, and life forms millions of years ago, we have to say that death was normal before sin happens. We also have to say that God not only allows death and suffering, God actually designed death and suffering. God planned death and suffering as his way to help create life. What kind of a God is that? That, that, that to me is really shaming God's character. Okay. And the third one, and this is what Ellen White talks about, and I think a lot of Adventists uh, talk about this one. If, this, if the earth was made over long periods of time, why have a Sabbath? There is no Sabbath. We're in an eternal, perpetual, 24-7 Sabbath. We don't need a Sabbath anymore because we are, you know, the last thousand years has been a perpetual Sabbath. Okay? That's the third consideration. If someone comes and has a discussion with you about the, you know, God created the world, um, you know, the um, simple life forms, you know, photosynthesis 3.5 million years ago, and then God helped evolutionary processes, you know, along the way. Um, we've got to get rid of these three problems somehow. Okay, just about finished. Okay, so here's my question. If, if death existed long before sin, what does this mean about sin? What are the wages of sin? But if there's death before sin, what now is the wages of sin? Nothing. Sin is not that bad. Because there's no penalty for sin. People, I mean, people die now. People died before we had sin. I mean, not people, but the animals died before we had sin. So, you know, if, 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 if the wages of sin is death, but death was happening before there was sin, then what's the problem with sin? Is that scary to you? When I think, Nathan, I know when I do wrong. Your conscience freaks you if you fail. Yes. God has put that in us. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Okay, just about finished. Okay, now, for me as a Seventh-day Adventist, I believe that God is going to restore our earth to perfection, to a really good situation where there is no death, no pain, no suffering. God doesn't need these things. These things are, are an interference to God's plan. They are not part of God's plan, as my sincere Christian brothers are trying to suggest. But, here's the problem for my friends once again. They say, um, God will restore the earth, but the question is, for my Christians who believe in an extended creation, what kind of an earth will God restore it to? Will it be the same as before, where, where there was death before sin? Now, in the new heaven and new earth, we're going to have more animals passing away, just like we had in their theory before sin, when God first created the earth. Um, the, yeah, the Bible says no more death, doesn't it? I, I think there's going to be no death in the new earth. If there's no death in the new earth, why did God need death in the first earth? All right, and then 
But some people say, no, maybe God will make a different earth. God made a not so great earth to begin with, but now God's going to make a better earth. So in the first earth God made, there was sin and death and suffering, and in the new earth there won't be. Okay, that's what some people say. But once again, why didn't God do it right the first time? If God can make a good earth, why did it take God two attempts? Is God not a good creator? Is God not smart? Now, and, this, and the atheists make fun of Christians about this. How can you Christians worship a God who can't get it right the first time? As I say, I believe as a Seventh-day Adventist, we've got a real strength when we say, God made things right the first time. God does not need death to create life. Death is an interference to God's plan. Death is not a part of God's plan. This is why I'm an Adventist. Death, to my way of thinking, to me, death is an enemy. Is there anyone else in this room who would agree with me? Death is an enemy. Death, death is a foe. And the Bible tells us that God will destroy, the last enemy God will destroy, it's not the bad people, it's death. It's going to be death. Death itself will be the very last thing that God destroys. Second of all, in the Bible, and for me as a Seventh-day Adventist, I think sin is very expensive. Sin is not cheap. There is no easy way to pay for sin. Sin is so expensive, in fact, that only the highest possible sacrifice can pay for sin. Not just any death, but the death of Jesus Christ <coughs> himself. If, if we want to say that sin was normal before Sin, if death was normal before sin happened, what are we saying about Jesus' death on the cross? It's not that, not that, not that valuable, eh? How about this one? I believe that God will restore our earth to perfection, the same way that it was before sin. Like the garden, and there was no need for suffering there. There was no need for pain. There was no need for death. That was not part of God's plan. And the and the fourth one. This is once again, many Christians would will dismiss this one. But I bring it back. I say, the Sabbath is a meaningful and regular reminder of, of some good things. A reminder of God's desire to have a relationship with us. God wants to save us. God wants us to be with Him. God wants to triumph with us over sin. Okay. So here's a question, just in closing. What can we do with this problem? Well, we've already discussed what it means... And we call this, by the way, the day-age view. That means people that say each day of creation was really a long period of time. It was an age. It was thousands of years, or maybe it was hundreds of years, or maybe it was a few months, or whatever it was. It was, it was longer than a literal day. When they say these things to us, we need to ask them questions. Excuse me, sir. Um, you believe the earth is really old. Um, that means that death happened before sin, right? Yes, well. Okay, so what's the wages of sin? Oh, death. Okay, so well, what's the wages of sin if death is normal? You know, if, if, if death is normal before sin, what's the wages of, of uh, sin? I think for those, and not all of us are this way, but for those of us, if, if you've got young people in your family, or you've got people that are, that are into science, we need more Christian scientists who believe in a young earth to study science. We need people who understand science to study it and put the record straight. There is good evidence out there to support what the Bible really teaches, but we need scientists who are willing to study it. Okay? So here's the homework, and I just want to challenge you to go home and just ask yourself just one of these four questions. Pick any question you like, just one. And I've given you some suggestions there. And the question is this, focus on one topic below, study your Bible so that you can explain confidently to a friend or a family member one of the following, okay? So I've just given you a, a Reader's Digest summary this morning. I haven't given you all the proofs and all the evidence. I haven't given you all the Bible texts. I'm encouraging you to find that yourself. I've given you some hints there. So the first question, is death a real enemy? We all think it is, right? That's an enemy, right? We think that's, that's a bad thing. But study your Bible and show me from the Bible that death is an enemy. And I've given you some references there. You maybe want to find some more too. Show me from the Bible. Show me from your brain. Show me logically that death is a real enemy. Because some people don't believe this. 
my atheist friends think death is, is a friend. You know, hey, you're in pain and suffering, you let people die so they can have no more pain and suffering. That's, that's the atheist worldview. Death is not an enemy to them, death is a friend. Even for our evangelical Christian friends, they say, when you die, you go to heaven straight away, right? So therefore, death is my friend. Death takes me to heaven. But that's not what the Bible teaches. So I encourage you to look into number one. Number two, sin is very costly. How much does sin cost? I encourage you to look in the Bible and find some good references, some passages that tell you, that tell us sin is very costly. Number three, God will restore our earth to perfection. There will be no sin, no death, no suffering. Find some references in the Bible so you can go to your friends, your family and show them this is what the Bible teaches. And number four, the Sabbath is meaningful and it's a reminder for us periodically. Just pick one of those questions. Just pick the one on sin is very costly. Or pick one on death being an enemy. Pick one on God restoring our earth. Or pick one on the Sabbath. And just explain to yourself. Read your Bible. Discuss it with your family. And just ask them, hey, this is what the Bible teaches. These four things. And all four of these things are, are affected by our view of creation. If we believe creation is a short, literal period of time... Those four statements stand up. And if we say creation is a big, long, extended period of time or something different, we say all four of those fall flat. So I encourage you to figure out, do your homework, find one of those four, study it up, and then you'll be ready when you're, when you're atheist or you're skeptic or you're a disbelieving family member or uh, your scientist friend or maybe even your Christian brother from another faith. They're talking about creation. Pick one of those and just... Ask them, hey, is sin really expensive? Is, uh, is death really bad? Because they don't know. That they might say, that's all right. <laughs> okay? All right, I've probably, I've probably said enough. I hope that was helpful. I, I encourage you to study this because the Bible does warn us that in the last days there will be false teachings. <laughs> Death is a terrible enemy. Uncle Ken has personal experience on that one. We all, we all do. If you like, yeah, like I said this, this, this is the, this is the handout, the homework. Yeah, no, I've got it in. Yep. So all we're doing is we're showing. There's a big debate in Christianity today. There is the people that say the, the young earth, that's like Adventists, who say literal seven-day creation. And there's the old earth Christians who say you know long periods of time. And I'm just saying today. If my Christian brothers want to stick to an old earth, they have to destroy those four points. And I've questioned them on the basis, forget science, we'll come back to science later, just on the basis of the Bible. Show me in the Bible how you can get rid of those four and still believe in the Bible. That's well, just my reading, question. I was reading a book about Czech publication, he said, he says it's a young world and a young age, he said it's not been until years. He wrote about that, you know? All right. I won't say much more, but that's probably good enough. Thank you very much, and let's just pray together, shall we? If you're willing to stand with me, if you can. Our Heavenly Father, we, we stand before you realizing that we are humans, that we are weak. And like uh, Job said when uh, you spoke to him, he, he said, I am nothing. I can't explain these things. You alone, God, are God. But we do believe, Lord, that you speak to us, not only through the Bible, but also through science. You speak to us through logic. You speak to us through our friends and our family. And I'd ask, Lord, that you'd speak to us through your Holy Spirit as well. These four topics we brought up today, Lord, we ask that you would help us to understand <coughs> just which one of those four to focus on, to reach our friends, and for our sincere brothers and uh, brothers in Christ, who, who are very sincere and genuine and they mean well, I ask that you'd help them to also read these things and help us to have a healthy discussion together. Not, not to put each other down, but to lift each other up towards Christ. And Lord, if I've misspoken this morning, if I've said anything that's wrong, or if I don't understand things the way you have me understand, I ask, Lord, that you'd change my heart too. Help me to be open to your leading. And help us to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour's name. Amen.